Good morning. We welcome all of you to worship on this uh, beautiful morning, this first Sunday uh, in October. And uh, uh, shockingly, uh, we don't have as many people in person today. Um, so I have a feeling a lot of you watching right now have a split screen going on. Uh, so, you know, that's, I'm just glad at least half of you is tuning into worship and the other half keeping up with the Vikings this morning. So uh, it's great to see you. It actually all kind of works out well today. So again, if you're a Packer fan, we're still in Pentecost. We still have the green going. Today we celebrate LWML Sunday, so a lot of purple in here for the Vikings. So uh, again, it's just all kind of just connecting this morning. So again, it's glad all of you, I'm glad of all of you here in worship. Again, whether you're here in person or if indeed you are at home uh, worshiping online, we're glad to have all of you. Uh, if you are indeed uh, worshiping at home, again, we welcome you. Uh, a couple of quick reminders uh, as we do each week. Uh, the hymns and a few other parts of the liturgy will be on your screen uh, throughout the service, but if you want to track along with the full uh, liturgy, again, we encourage you to grab the PDF of the uh, service bulletin that you can find on the website stjohnwoodbury.org. Uh, and likewise, for our guests online, uh, we'd love to connect with you. If you want to uh, uh, connect with us, we'd love to get to know you so you can fill out an online connect card. Again, you can find that on the website under the I'm New section. Uh, for those are, who are worshiping here in the sanctuary, again, uh, we're glad to have you here with us. Uh, so hopefully you'll grab what you needed on the way in with our bulletins uh, and the, the what's happening, uh, which again, uh, give an overview of what's coming up at St. John as well as, uh, again, that paragraph overview of the service, the sermon outline, if you want to take notes or track along there, again, you can find that uh, in that what's happening. Uh, if you're visiting today, uh, we would love to connect with you. Uh, a couple ways to do that, uh, again, in the back of the chairs, we have our green or purple uh, connect cards. Uh, and again, if you have not yet filled one out before, we'd invite you to fill one out. Uh, you can place those in the offering plate on the way out. Uh, or if you want to just use an online connect card on the back of your bulletin, there's a QR code. If you scan that with your phone, uh, you can just fill that out digitally. And again, we'd love to connect with you and get to know you better. As I mentioned, uh, today is LWML Sunday, Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. Uh, and so uh, today's order of service uh, uh, follows along with LWML Sunday service. Uh, you'll notice a couple of changes. We'll be doing the creed uh, before, the ser uh, before the sermon. And then after the sermon, we're going to say the LWML pledge together. Uh, of course, we're going to celebrate them uh, on this day. And also today, we are continuing our uh, fall sermon series on the topic of discipleship. Uh, and today, as we continue this series, uh, we're going to be looking at the topic of suffering, uh, suffering in the role of the disciple. And so our central point of the week, which you can find up on the screen as well as on your bulletin, says, uh, again, the, once again, we have a quote from um, the pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It says, the cross is laid on every Christian. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. And again, as we look at that uh, quote, as we look at that topic of suffering, we dig into, again, what that means in our day-to-day -day life. So, having said all that, I invite you to stand at this time. I invite you to greet those around you, and we'll say, standing and face the back for our opening hymn.
On this, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, we worship in God's name. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with Psalm 100, read responsibly. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you did not spare your own Son, but gave him up for us all. Grant that by faith we may trust in your promises and live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our special music.
Good morning. <clears throat> the readings for today are taken from Isaiah. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and li I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal, coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then <clears throat> I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the epistle reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? <clears throat> no one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. At this time we invite our children forward for today's children's message. How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. Anybody want to share anything fun or exciting or special that happened? Yeah, buddy. We got a new puppy. You got a new puppy. That's right. Did you, you talked about that before, didn't you? You're going to get the new puppy. What's the puppy's name? Violet. Violet. I chose it. You got to choose it? Man, it's lucky. Is it big puppy, small puppy, medium puppy? Small, small right now. Is he going to be a really big dog? Yeah, yeah hopefully wrestle around with you and your brother. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, we got new neighbor. 
You got new neighbors? Fun. So they have any kids that you can play with? Yeah? Oh, fun, fun, fun. Yes. Oh, a new babysitter. Well, that's like a new neighbor, you know. They're both good. Oh, down the street. So that's ah, both good. It's fun either way. So, well, cool. So, and how's school going? Good. School, preschool, all that good stuff. So, well, good. Well, I'm glad to see you guys here today. I want you guys uh, to think about this. Uh, have you ever had something bad happen to you? No? Leo says no. I love it. They made it? Yeah. Wow, you got a brand new bed. The dinosaurs on it. Dinosaurs. Oh, jeez. I am jealous. I have no dinosaurs on my bed. So, man, that's a lucky guy. So, but other than Leo, we've all had something bad happen. Have you guys ever cried before? Does anybody want to share a time that you were sad or you got hurt or injured? Anybody want to share? Yeah. You fell off your bike. Did you, like, scratch up your arm and your legs? Maybe you have to get some Band-Aids? Yeah. That's no fun. Yeah. How about you? You bumped your head. Into a post? Yeah. I've done that before, too. Sometimes I'll hit it. You know what I did one time? I actually did it in the, the parking lot out here. I opened my car door into my face. I don't know how I did that, but that hurt really bad. Yeah. I stepped on some long grass. You stepped on some long grass and it hurt? In the water, in the water. And there's water in there, too. Yeah. Water. Yucky water. Yeah. So it, it stings when bad stuff, like when we fall off our bike, or we bump our head, or we, we get hurt, you know, we're walking outside. But when you look back, and you look at the times you got hurt, do you remember the people that helped you? Like when you get sad, who helps you? My mom and dad. Mom and dad help you. Maybe grandma, grandpa, maybe a teacher comes and helps you. And they make you feel better. You know, when we look at our life, we have many times where we have bad stuff happen, and, and we get hurt and we cry. But we also have these wonderful people that they come and take care of us. And this reminds us of the most incredible thing, that when we have people who help us, they remind us of Jesus. Because Jesus gave us the greatest healing of all. You see, all of us, we do things that we're not supposed to do. We say things we shouldn't say. That's called we commit sin. But Jesus says, I love you so much that I'm going to come and make things right. I'm going to fix you. Does anybody know how he did that? What did he do for us on the cross? And, and God in, a, is a, in the sky. Yeah, and God's watching over us from the sky, absolutely. And what did he do? What did Jesus do for us on the cross? He died on the cross. He died on the cross. Forgive all of our sins to make us and, and right. Made bodies for us. Made bodies for us, exactly. And then Jesus rose again. And because of that, we know that we're forgiven. And here's the cool thing, is that even as we get older, you know what, sometimes bad things happen, and we're still going to cry, and we're still going to hurt. But because we know we belong to Jesus, even when we suffer, even when we hurt, we remember that one day we get to live with him forever in heaven. And when we get there, guess what? No more pain, no more suffering, just living with Jesus forever. And that's, that's what in the whole inheritance too. Exactly. Amen to that. That's the best word in the whole entire history. We're going to end with that. that was, that's like a sermon right there. So, great job. Let's fold our hands and let's pray. If you please repeat it for me, even the adults. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping me when I get hurt. Thank you even more for fixing my biggest problems through your death and resurrection. Help me to always remember that I get to live with you in heaven forever. I love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, well, thanks for coming up. You guys can head back to your seats. As they head back to their seats, our worship continues as we stand.
The Holy Gospel for today is according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read our Gospel together. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let the house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue again as we confess our faith. Today we do so on this LWML Sunday through the words of the Nicene Creed. We say our creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our worship continues as we sing our hymn of the day. I am baptized. 
Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, uh, again, every day that you give to us is an incredible gift. Uh, but Lord, especially this day, this first day of the week, this resurrection day, this day that you give us this blessed opportunity to gather together to worship you, to be together, whether in person or online, to hear your word, to sing your praises, to receive your gifts in the Lord's Supper, and to lay our prayers before you. Lord, for all this, we thank you. And Lord, as we look at our lives, the lives you've called us to, lives of faithfulness, lives of discipleship, and what it means that suffering is a part of that life. As we dig into this topic, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be pleasing in your sight, O Lord our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So once again, we are continuing today with our uh, fall sermon series on this topic of discipleship. So we are down to the last a uh, handful of messages in this seven-week series. And again, throughout this series, as I've said each week, uh, we're really getting at two main questions. All right, one, what is a disciple of Jesus Christ? And two, what does it mean to live as a disciple of Jesus? In other words, what does a disciple's life supposed to look like? Now again, the, the, the basic, very straightforward definition that we've been going with to help guide us to answer that first question, what is a disciple of Jesus Christ? We say a disciple really is three things. A disciple is one who follows Jesus. A disciple is one who has been changed and transformed by Jesus. And a disciple is one who is faithfully obedient, who participates in the mission of Jesus. Now as we look at, again, what it means that we live out our lives as the baptized, redeemed, forgiven, beloved children of God, followers, disciples of Jesus Christ. Again, we, we, we've stepped into different areas of, again, what that means in our day-to-day -day lives. And today, again, as you can see up on the screen, we're going to really focus on suffering. What is the role of suffering in a disciple's life? Especially today, that question what is the role of suffering for the sake of Christ in the life of a disciple? And we're going to use the last half of Mark chapter 8 as kind of our guide as we dig into this. So if you want to track along with the, the different sections of Mark 8 that we'll be going through, again, I invite you to open your pew Bibles. You can find this uh, in your pew Bibles on page 1,570. So page one thousand. 570. We're going to start with verses 27 through 30. So Mark writes here, Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. So again here, Jesus and his disciples, they're, they're visiting the region around Caesarea Philippi. Now historically, 
this was a place that was well known for its pagan worship. Okay, at one point, it was where they would practice Baal worship. They, they practiced worship to the Greek god Pan. This is even the location for worshiping Caesar himself. And so again, with this backdrop, Jesus goes to the disciples and just asks them, hey, what's the word on the street? What are you seeing on Twitter? You know, what are they putting out on Instagram? What are they talking about me? You know, what's the word? They say, well, what we've been hearing from others is some say you're John the Baptist. Others think you're Elijah. Others think that you're a prophet. And notice in their response, they didn't say that they were hearing from others that there was thoughts that he was the Messiah. But then Jesus turns to them and says, well, okay. What about you? How are you going to answer this question? Who do you say that I am? Other people are saying, I'm John the Baptist or Elijah or a prophet, but what about you guys? You who are following me, who do you say that I am? And Peter, speaking on behalf of the disciples, says, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. And see, this is central to what then happens next. This response that Peter gives is central and fundamental to what we find next in Mark verse 8. And so we're going to pick up with verses 31 to 33. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Again, the question on the table here for the disciples is, who is Jesus? And Peter answered well. Peter said, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God. But the question now is, what does that mean? And this is where Jesus comes with his answer. Because Jesus says, that's the right answer. I am the Messiah, but I am not the Messiah who came to set up my earthly power. I'm not the Messiah who came to live in a palace. I am not the Messiah who came to live the good life, to take it easy, to set up my earthly kingdom, rule, and reign. You are right, I am the Messiah, but I am the Messiah who has come to suffer. I am the Messiah who has come to be rejected. I am the Messiah who has come to die. I am the Messiah who has come to rise again. You see, when, when Peter and the disciples, when they heard this, they could not accept it. They could accept the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. But the idea of a suffering, rejected, dying Messiah, that was something that they could not handle. And so again, Peter, on behalf of the twelve, he pulls Jesus aside. He starts to rebuke him. He's rebuking the mass. He says, Jesus, that's the wrong answer. You're the Messiah, but that's not the kind of Messiah you're going to be. I love this quote. It's from an author giving some in-depth uh, in look into this response from the twelve, who writes, The disciples were unprepared for this clear revelation that Messiah would suffer, die, and rise again. Peter understood it, but refused to accept it. He could not reconcile this view of Messiah with the popular. But again, Jesus knew who he was. He knew his calling. He knew that he was the Christ who came to suffer, who came to die, who came to rise again. And he would not let anything get in his way of being faithful to his identity, being faithful to that calling. And so in turn, after Peter rebukes him, he rebukes Peter. Not for being Peter, but for being in that moment an obstacle to his true calling of being the suffering Christ for the sake of the world. And then Jesus turns to the crowd, and in so doing, he turns to us. And we continue on with verses 34 to 38. Then he called the crowd to him along with the disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple 
must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Again, after rebuking the disciples, he calls the crowd, he says, here is what it means to follow me. If you want to be my disciple, again, the one who follows me, the one who is transformed and changed by me, the one who participates in my mission, here's what it means for you. You must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow. And Jesus' words here, these words of following Christ, the suffering Christ, a life of suffering as we follow the suffering one. It's echoed throughout the scriptures. For those who desire, for those who are called to be followers of the rejected, suffering, and dying Messiah, a life of suffering for his name and for his sake is to be expected. I mean, listen to what the Apostle Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 4. Again, this very same one who tried to reject Jesus' claim to be the suffering Messiah. Later, Peter himself would write these words. He says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of the glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. And our friend, Pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer, goes deeper into this concept. and He writes this. He says, suffering then is the badge of true discipleship. The disciple is not above his master. Discipleship means allegiance to the suffering Christ. And it is therefore not at all surprising that Christians should be called upon to suffer. But again, here, here's the great twist. Again, this life of discipleship that we have been blessed with, that we've been brought into the kingdom of God to be followers of Christ Jesus through his grace, through his mercy, through his favor, this life of suffering as we follow the suffering one. This life gives true life. Because that's what Jesus says. If you lose your life for my sake, you have real life. And this life of suffering for the sake of Christ, it brings about true joy, real joy, God-given, blessed joy. I mean, listen to what the Apostle James writes in James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. You know, one of the, the more famous quotes that uh, I'm guessing you've heard at some point. Uh, I mean, we use it for our central point of the week uh, this week, but I'm guessing at some point you've heard this quote. You may have not known who it came from or kind of the context for it, but it's a famous quote from, again, our friend Pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer who wrote, when Christ bids a man, he bids, or excuse me, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. And so again, maybe you've heard that quote, you really know where it was from, or maybe you knew that quote was from Bonhoeffer. But I think there's a decent chance we haven't heard kind of that, the full context of what Bonhoeffer is writing about here. And I want to share with you just this paragraph from his work, again, The Cost of Discipleship. He writes this. The cross is laid on every Christian. The first Christ's suffering 
which every man must experience is the call to abandon the attachments of this world. It is that dying of the old man, which is the result of his encounter with Christ. As we embark upon discipleship, we surrender ourselves to Christ in union with his death. We give over our lives to death. Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. It may be a death like that of the first disciples who had to leave home and work to follow him, or it may be a death like Luther's, who had to leave the monastery and go out into the world. But it is the same death every time. Death in Jesus Christ. The death of the old man at his call. Jesus summons the rich young man who uh, was calling him to die because only the man who is dead to his own will can follow Christ. In, every, in fact, every command of Jesus is a call to die with all our affections and lusts. See, in each and every day, what Bonhoeffer is saying here, every day, as we live as disciples of Christ Jesus, followers of the suffering, rejected, and killed Messiah, every day means a day of death for us. Death to our sinful nature. Death to our attachments to this world. But again, this life of following Christ, this life that may bring about suffering for his sake is the only life to live. Because through our attachment to Christ, through our dying to ourself, through our dying to our sinful nature, through our suffering for the name of Christ, through this life of discipleship, we actually have life. Real life. Real, tangible, God-given, blessed life in this life, but even more so in the life yet to come. And see, that's why we can rejoice every day. Even when we suffer, even when we have a bad day, and especially when we suffer and have a bad day because we belong to Christ. Because we are mocked, we are ridiculed, we are made fun of, we face hardships because of our attachment to Christ Jesus, because we have been brought into his family. When we face those sufferings, those hardships, we rejoice because we know who we belong to. We belong to Jesus, the Messiah, the Messiah who loves us so much that he came to suffer. He came to be rejected. He came to die. He came to rise. So that we may live. May God be with us when we face sufferings and trials of every kind for his name, for his sake, for his glory. Amen and amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the trials that we face for your name. Lord, when we face suffering and hardships, because of the name that you have given to us, the beloved children of God. When those moments happen, Lord, remind us by the power of the Spirit to rejoice and be glad, because in those moments we are connected to your Son. Lord, remind us always of the bigger picture, that as we follow you, when we face rejections, Lord, we rejoice because we know that we belong to you, which means we belong to you forever which means we live with you forever in heaven, in paradise. Lord, help us to keep our eyes fixed and focused on you, today and every day. We pray all this and more in your name, Jesus. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand. Again, on this LWML Sunday, uh, we want to uh, celebrate our Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And so as we respond to God's word today, we do so by affirming our commitment to our participation in the kingdom of God as we say together the creed, the pledge from the LWML. We say it together. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves with all that we are and have and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest field, we pledge him our willing service 
wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, and our will to do his will, and every power in our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. Our worship continues with our new verse of the month. Now that we are in uh, the month of October, uh, we will aim to take to heart and internalize this portion of Scripture. So for the month of October, our verse of the month is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38. We say it together. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. We continue our worship today with a gathering of our offerings. For those worshiping online, again, a reminder that you can give online on our website or you can mail in your offerings to the church office. Uh, for those here in the sanctuary, if you didn't have a chance to put your offering uh, in the offering plate on the way in, you can do so on the way out. Today we also, again, on this LWML Sunday, we celebrate our Lutheran Women's Missionary League uh, as we celebrate their mites. Uh, again, as you can see on the screen, uh, the amounts as of August of 2022 for the biennium. Again, the goal is $2.15 million, and uh, they are sitting at uh, just over $1.7 million there. Again, this funds uh, mission projects uh, throughout the world. We're so grateful for all the work that they do. We pray as we entrust into God's care our offerings on this day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a generous God. Uh, Lord, you showed that generosity by not withholding your Son from us, but by giving him to be the God, to be the Savior that would suffer, die, and rise for us, that we would have forgiveness, life, and salvation. And so, Lord, help us to live generous lives for the sake of others, that just as we have heard the good news and called upon you, that all people everywhere would hear that good news, call upon you, and be saved. Lord, again, use these gifts to extend your kingdom both here in Woodbury and throughout the world. We pray all this and more in your name, Jesus. Amen. We continue with our congregational prayers. Uh, today, uh, along with the uh, uh, names mentioned in your prayer list, uh, printed in your bulletin, your what's happening, uh, we want to uh, add a couple of other prayer requests. Uh, of course, today, uh, we want to keep uh, LWL missions in our prayers. Uh, we also want to pray today uh, for uh, Samantha, uh, who is a daughter of one of our members uh, who recently had a heart attack, so we want to keep her in our prayers. Also for Judy Davidson, uh, I did get a phone call last night that she was in the hospital uh, with some uh, chest tightness, so we want to keep Judy in our prayers today. Uh, we also got word yesterday that Olene Tolbert, we've been praying for her for a while, uh, that was uh, Cindy Enerton's mother, uh, Gary Enerton's mother-in-law, uh, Olene passed away yesterday, so please keep uh, Gary and the rest of the family in your prayers. Uh, today we also celebrate uh, the wedding of Jacob Edwards and uh, Kaylee Murphy. Uh, Jake and Kaylee were uh, united in marriage yesterday uh, afternoon, so we thank God for that. We pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your goodness and love in Christ that sustains us each day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is for us and with us in all things. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our comforter and sustainer of faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray, our congregation, in our life together, and witness in the world. Grant us your grace and strengthen your people throughout the word, or through the word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation throughout the world, that each person involved would see LWML opportunities to be salt and light to their neighbors, and through various opportunities for mission. Through the faithful gathering of mites, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put all you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence, reminding us that nothing can separate us from your love. Unite the members of all families in love towards you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From our midst, Lord, today we especially pray for Jake, and, uh, Jake Edwards and Kaylee Murphy. We pray for Judy Davidson. We pray uh, for all who mourn the death of Olene Tolbert. Lord, we also pray for Samantha, Dale, Carlos, Sharon, Ed, Jane, Tiffany. 
Marnie Helmrich's friend. We pray for Bruce, Rowan, Ray, Joanne, Nancy, Lisa, Joanne, Ginger, Aaron, Dorothy, Clara, Kevin, Mary, Doug, Dolores, Betsy, Marion, and those that we lay before you, Lord, in our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, Lord our God, for you have not only promised us eternal life with you, but have also bestowed on us the gift of faith by which we can trust that by his death and resurrection your Son has fulfilled all your promises, opening heaven to all who call on him for mercy and forgiveness. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices evermore praising you and singing. God's word tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you today and always. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our Agnus Day.
please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you strengthen us with the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We pray together our send-off prayer. Knowing that the time is drawing near, may I, by your Spirit's prompting, support the mission and ministry of my church with my personal witness, my earnest prayers, and my sacrificial gifts. Grant that through me, many may be saved from the kingdom of darkness for the kingdom of your light. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. We stay standing as we sing our closing hymn, Serve the Lord with Gladness. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us, whether in person or online, as we say each week. We pray there's a source of joy and peace and blessing to you. Uh, for those worshiping online, uh, hopefully the Vikings are doing well uh, as you, uh, again, hopefully we're blessed in both ways this morning. So a couple of quick announcements before we close our time together. Again, we invite you, as always, look through what's happening and see what's coming up in St. John. Again, we are uh, hoping to see if there's enough interest to do a trunk or tree. We do need to have at least 15 people willing to decorate their cars. This is the last week to uh, say, yep, we will uh, participate uh, so that we can either say we're going to do it or not do it. So again, you can sign up at the Welcome Center or let me know. Also, for those who are looking to get connected to St. John, uh, a month from now, uh, in uh, November 5th, uh, we're going to have our next Get to Know St. John event with uh, November 6th being our, 6th being our next 
uh, new member welcome Sunday. Uh, also, the Metro Dining Club cards uh, are back this year, so if you want to support your youth and get a lot of great coupons, uh, again, you can visit the table out there. Uh, it's $30. Checks are made out to uh, uh, St. John Youth or Cash. Uh, so again, if nobody's manning the booth, you can just put the money in the envelope and grab a box of cards, so we trust you on that. Uh, but last thing before um, we dismiss, uh, you'll notice on the back, uh, we have a nice long uh, write-up on Meals on Wheels. Today, actually, the exact day, October 5th, uh, it marks, as it says, the five-year anniversary of delivering Meals on Wheels for our team here at St. John. If you look at that, it says, over the course of five years, we have delivered over 4,000 meals, making stops at over 2,000 homes. So if you are here today and have been involved in any way with Meals on Wheels, I know Cheryl's standing in the back out there. Uh, could you stand? Um, and it might only be Cheryl, so we might just be clapping for Cheryl. Oh, and we got, uh, we got the, the claws here. Can we give them a big round of applause? So again, it's great dedication. The blessings that it gives to the community is absolutely unbelievable. So again, thank you for uh, all those who participate. Again, read more about that with your What's Happening. So we invite you to stick around. We do have coffee today for adult Bible studies. So we'll get going here in a few minutes for the adult Bible study. Uh, Sunday school youth Bible study is down uh, the hallway. So again, stick around for that. Uh, and then go home and watch the TiVo version of the Vikings game. So I'm sure they did fine. Uh, the, the Saints are no good anyway. So uh, we'll be good. But uh, stick around. Uh, be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day. We close with the Lord's dismissal. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.